Hi, today we are going to know more about Python programming language. It's a beautiful programming language which is very simple and easy to learn and can be learned by anyone. So let's begin with this beautiful journey of Python programming. Let's begin with an introduction of Python. Python is a high level interpreted language which runs its codes one by one. It's an object oriented programming language which is general purpose and it can also be used for web development with its, more, with its various packages and uh, modules inside it. It is also used for scientific and mathematical computing using other packages like SkyPy, NumPy, Orange, such modules are very useful. Desktop graphical user interfaces also can be done with the help of other modules or other packages like Pygame, Panda 3D, etc. Looking at other features of Python, it is a simple language which is easier to learn. It's just like reading English and anyone can understand what's there behind the codes. It's free and open source. Anyone can download it from anywhere and it's all, all free of cost. It is portable and that is what it is famous for. It's extensibility and it is embeddable. At the same time, it has got standard large library which we can use for various other methods. It was created by Guido van Rusum in 1991. And why the name Python? Definitely not after the dangerous snake Python. But then Rossum was fan of a comedy series from late 70s. And the name Python was adopted from the same series, Monty Python's Flying Circus. The reasons to choose Python as first language because it has got very simple and elegant in text, syntax. Anyone can understand the syntax. It's not overly strict at the same time, whereas it, its expressiveness of the language is very good. It's, it, is, it has got great community and support and so is the same process of installation as well, which is very simple. Throughout, we will be using Jupyter Notebook, Spider, Repl, or Google Collaboratory from time to time for doing the hands-on, wherein Jupyter would be our main IDE for performing the codes in Python. So let me begin with an introduction of Jupyter Notebook. What you see over here, this is where we can run our codes. What here at the starting, if I double click or simply click once over there, this is the title of the notebook. So for example, today we will be working on numbers. So I, if I want, I can make changes to it as well at the same time. So that's the title. Next thing, let us look at the various icons and options available over here on the top. So if we go to the file section, in the file section, you will see about new notebook. If you want to open new Python 3 notebook, it can be opened from here. There is open option. There is make a copy, save as, rename. We are pretty much used to with all the file options mostly. We can also download the codes into various formats like PDF, HTML, Markdown, notebook, etc. Going to the edit option. We can cut, copy and paste cells from here. We can delete the cells and we can undo delete cells. And similarly, we can also split and merge our cells, move our cells up and down according to the selected option for our cell. And there are other options related to cell operations in the edit option. If we go to the second, to the third tab, what we see here is about the view option wherein it allows us to view various headers, toolbars related to the cell. Insert option lets us insert a, put a new cell below or above the selected cell. Cell option will help us to run the cell and other options related to it. Kernel is an important part. It is something which helps you run the codes from the back background. So at any point of time, if you see that your kernel is not working or your code is not getting recorded 
or it's not running or if it is not giving you any output just go and shut down your kernel it won't delete your existing codes but then it will just stop the operations right there and then you can restart it and you can start all over again with the same set of codes from where you had stopped the next option here on the top we have is widgets and help option is also very important at the same time wherein you can use all these options to refer to your python for example python reference i python reference numpy reference skypy matplotlib simpy pandas etc these are all the options which you can refer to so these options will take you to the documentation of python so that's all about the help section and about all the tabs which you see over here on the top. Coming to the icons which are visible over here, these are important from saving your existing codes, from adding a new cell for this plus icon. Scissor is used for cutting the selected cell or for removing it, wherein what you see here is for the copy and for the paste option. The arrows up and down are used wherein you want to move your existing selected cell up from the rest of the cells or down from the rest of the cells. And you can go on clicking till and merge it to the position where you want. Place it to the position where you want. Next is the run option wherein you can use for running your cells or for, for running the code in a particular selected cell. And then we have other options over here like you can interrupt the kernel at the same point you can restart the kernel from here as well. And what you see over here in this drop down is the code option, the markdown, the raw NB convert and heading. So what these options let you do is that in if you uh, for example if I'm keeping my this cell selected I'm mentioning that these are the codes over here. If I want to give some heading or if I want to write some notes, I can use other options at the same time accordingly. And then you can open the command palette from this option which is present over here. So let's begin with some hands-on of Python and let us look at how easy this particular programming language is. So we will begin with numbers and more in Python and in this lecture we will learn about numbers in Python and how to use them. We will learn about the following topics like types of numbers in Python. We will also look at basic arithmetic operations in Python. Differences between classic division and floor division. Object assignment in Python. So all these options will be seen by us today. So if you see what I have written here in this particular cell is 3, 12345 and I have mentioned it is greater than 4, 6. When I select this and run this, it gives me false because we are using the comparison operator between these kinds of numbers. Wherein, if I am using a comparison operator with 2, 2 and mentioning a greater than equal to sign with 2, 2 which is itself, it is telling me true because although it is not greater but then it is equal right they both are equal so that's why I'm getting a true in this case as we proceed we will be looking at the types of numbers in Python so always remember that Python has various types of numbers like numeric literals we are mainly focusing on integers and floating point numbers integers are just whole numbers positive or negative for example, 2 and minus 2 are examples of integers. Similarly, we have other numbers also in Python, which are, you know, um, you can call them the floating numbers, which are notable because they have a decimal point in between or use an exponential to define those particular numbers in Python. Okay, for example, 2.0 and minus 2.1, these are all examples of the floating point numbers, which you see over here. As we proceed, you can also see that we have 4e2, which is 4 times 10 to the power of 2, is also an example of a floating number in Python. Throughout this course, we will be mainly working with integers or simple float number types in Python.
So here what you see below is a table of the two main types we will find out um, you know in our time while while working with some examples so these are the exam this is a simple example of integers it can be positive or negative wherein what you see over here this is a floating point number which consists of decimal points or some kind of exponentiation operator here that is what it is okay so now let's start with some of the basic arithmetics in python and some hands-on so what you see over here 2 plus 1 when I run this, it's giving me 3. It means that we can perform addition, we can perform subtraction, multiplication. Please note that in uh, 2 multiplied by 3 is represented by 2 asterisks in Python. Division in Python. So here what you see is the type function inside which we have put the int function. So we are trying to find out that what is the type and let me run and show you I come to know that it's the integer which is 3 divided by 2 whatever the output will come that will be integer because I have mentioned here using the int function that um, see 3.3 3 divided by 2 is going to give me 1.5 right but uh, 1.5 should be a float ideally but then because I have mentioned int function over here, which, which means that I'm converting that float into the integer. So that is how it goes. As we proceed to the next function, we will be using the floor function. Floor function is use, usually used, <coughs> you know. Um, so it's, it's going to divide uh, 7 divided by 2 and it's going to give you uh, the, you know, it's going to uh, return an integer rounding of um, the one which is below it like when you <coughs> all right so floor division floor division is going to do, do the division but then it's going to round off to the round off to the number which is going to be lesser than the actual one for example 7 divided by 4 um, floor floor division is uh, shown or it's mentioned in this manner wherein uh, we are dividing and these double hash uh, slashes are used here and when you divide it you get the output as 1.75 but then when you when you actually run it in python for the floor division it gives you one because it's rounding off to one 1.75 has been rounded off to one so that is what it has done for us as we proceed we will be seeing modulo or modular or rem remainder um, it's what that's what we are going to see now so seven percent four is basically the seven uh, when we divide seven by four we whatever uh, when we divide seven by four we will receive the the remainder which happens to be three so that is what the modulo operator looks like the percent sign and modulo division does in this manner two to the power three this is what um, the asterisk represents it means that it's it means that here we are doing the exponentiation here so two to the power three all right so when we when we do that two into two into two so we get eight similarly we can also do the roots in the same manner that f four to the power half which means it's basically the root so this four square root is two right so that's what we get here in the output and we can also perform other arithmetic operations in python but then one thing to note here is that python follows the bodmas rule i'm sure most of us are pretty familiar with bodmas rule which we have already learned during our school days so by that's what python does for us the complicated arithmetic operations also can be done the next thing is about variable assignments so we can create objects so suppose we have assigned a as the number five and we have assigned b with the number six when i run this and then i can try to find out type of a lesser than six it tells me that it's a bool or a boolean uh, you know equation which is being used over there 
I can perform other iterations also at the same time. A plus A which is 5 plus 5 is 10. And I can also do reassignment. So when I'm assigning A is equals to 10 and this is A which happens to be 10. That is what I get here as the output, the new uh, value which I had assigned to A. That is what I'm getting. As we proceed, we can also check and do some more, uh, you know, redefin redefining our object wherein I'm mentioning here A is equals to A plus A. So when I run this and if I check what is there inside A, it tells me it's 20. 10 plus 10 has now become 20. So that is what Python does for us. And then when you are naming the objects, there are certain rules which you need to follow. For example, the names cannot start with a number. Okay. In our case, A and B were the objects which we had uh, formed and we had assigned them the values of 5 and 6. Other rules are that there can be no space in the name. You can use underscore instead. The third thing or the third condition is that you can't use any of the symbols like you know the inverted commas the brackets the question marks and other uh, you know uh, special symbols also cannot be used when you are working upon and when you are naming your object and it's considered as a best practice that names are used in lower case that's always uh, it's always better to use your name in the lower case you can avoid using the characters like l o i you know as single character variable names it can be a little it can be a little confusing at the same time and then next is you can avoid using words that have special meaning in python like list and string so do not use all these uh, names when you are assign when you are using them in your assignment operators that that is how it is there so for example you can see here my income has been I've mentioned here as 35003000 similarly you know I've I've used another name as tax underscore rate you can use my underscore taxes so such names can be assigned and at the same time as we as we proceed you can see that these names can be taken very properly and in a very good manner so this is just a brief introduction about numbers in python As we proceed, we can also look at another concept in Python. So another important concept is strings in Python. Strings are used in Python to record the text information such as names. Strings in Python are actually a sequence which basically means that Python keeps track of every element in the string as a sequence. For example, Python understands the string hello to be a sequence of letters in a specific order. This means we will be able to use indexing to grab particular letters like the first letter or the last letter. This idea of a sequence is an important one in Python and we will touch upon it later on in the future. In this lecture, however, we will learn about creating the strings, printing the strings, string indexing and slicing. String properties, string methods and print formatting will be seen by us. As we proceed, you can see here, we will try to now create a string. So to create a string in Python, you need to use either single quotes or double quotes. For example, what you see here, hello, it, I have mentioned it in single quote and I can also give an entire sentence like this is also a string in single quotes. Similarly, I can also use double quotes for mentioning my particular one word or it can be a sentence also however you have to be very uh, careful with the quotes because you can see that this is a little confusing wherein i am is there and this is confusing because the quotes are be becoming and they are ending over here and then this is considered as an extra quote so in this manner you get a syntax error so when you when you see that here there is a combination of single quotes in this manner what you can do is you can combine double quote and single quote to avoid any kind of confusion in such cases so the whole sentence has been enclosed in double quotes and then i am which you see here that is mentioned anyways it will be in single quotes so you can avoid confusion in this man manner 
another thing is like printing a string so using jupyter notebook with just a string in a cell will automatically output strings but the correct way to disp display the strings in your output is by using a print function so for example now my v is hello world okay so i did not mention v here i did not define any v so let just let me check so never mind i'll define it now and let this go up and v equals to i'll mention it as hello world in this manner and when i run this then i should be getting the value of v all right so that is there similarly you can define other strings also and it will your object should be able to take the strings in the same manner you can also use print statements or print function to give you the output of that particular statement which you have mentioned please note that the slash n which you see over here is used when you want to introduce a particular sentence in a new line so for example when i'm printing this kind of a statement let me use a new cell for you and let me paste it here in the same manner and when i run this so you can see that use is there and then everything which is followed by the slash n is coming in a new line so whenever you want to introduce a new line you use slash n we also have other things like string indexing so for string indexing there are very many ways in which you can use the string indexing like s is equals to hello world let me run this and let me show you s how it works and then i can go on extracting the values which are there so as we all know that in python the indexing starts with the number 0 so h stands for 0 similarly s of 0 right which means the first first value which is there which is h so when i run this let, let me first run this first here let me define my s is hello world and i'm checking my values which are there in s when i print s and now i'm trying to extract the values so please note that whenever i want to extract or access the values which are there in a particular string i usually refer to um square brackets and then mention the index value so square brackets are used in such cases wherein you want to access or extract the values so s of 0 is giving me h in this case similarly s of 1 is going to give me the second value which rests in hello world which is hap which happens to be e and then s of 2 is giving me l also please notice that you can use the colon sign to perform slicing which grabs everything up to the designated point for example from the f from the second element onwards i want everything to be there so s i've mentioned because from s which happens to be hello world i want to extract values so which values i want to extract everything starting from index number 1 all all till the end so i have kept values after colon as empty and the second value which happens to be e from there you can see including the space everything has come here in the output so in this manner i have been able to extract my values and in the same way you can also use other type of indexing you can grab everything up to that particular index so in my case i have used the value 3 so 0 1 and 2 okay so hello from hello you get hell h e l right and it could take the value or the index per, uh, number which was there at the third position also but please note that in python it always takes one value before it okay so if i am mentioning that i want the index value till 3 it means that it's going to just take values from up to like from 0 1 and 2 and it will skip the last or the specified index so this is the 
beauty of python which we need to remember and when you are mentioning simply colon and no number before or after that it means that you are asking to extract all the values here okay and in the sim similar manner you can remove certain words also so like when i'm mentioning here in square brackets i'm, I'm trying to mention that it s of minus one means the last letter should be gone so when i run this particular code it tells me it just gives me the output as d and when i want to check it right i can when i want to check it s of everything up to minus one this is the way in which it gives me the output so what, what we are doing basically is that we are using the index and slice notation to grab the elements of a sequence by specifying the step size okay the default is one for instance we can use two colons in a row and then a number specifying the frequency to grab elements okay so that's what i'm trying to tell so when you want to grab everything but go in step size of one you can just mention so I'm, I'm wanting to grab everything but go in step size of one so i've mentioned here double double colon and one so i've just been able to grab everything and here also you can grab everything what you see in this particular code but then it's all in the step size of two like you're using alternative elements here in this case so that's what you get and you can also use to print your strings in the backward manner so for that i'm mentioning minus one here uh, with the double colon values which i have mentioned inside the square brackets and you get everything in the reverse direction okay so that's there other important thing regarding string basics which you can see here is that we can also use a function uh, called alien function to check the length of a string so for example i'm using the length function on hello world so it's going to tell me how many letters are there and it's also going to calculate the space which lies between hello and world so totally there are 10 alphabets and one space and hence the output for len function for hello world is 11 okay so python's built-in function l function len function it counts all the characters in the string and it includes spaces and punctuations right so please note that it includes all the spaces and punctuations next thing is the string properties in python so it's important to note that strings have an important property known as immutability so this means that once a string is created the element within it cannot be changed or replaced for example s okay so i've already mentioned s as hello world but s of zero is equals to x when i'm trying to um, give a value of x instead of h over here right s of zero i'm i'm trying to replace h with x so when i do that i get type error and it tells me the error that the string object does not support item assignment so it's a type error so there are different types of errors in python which we will be studying shortly but uh, string assignment is not allowed in this manner in python as we proceed we will also be looking at some more iterations in python now so my s is hello world and i'm trying to concatenate something so i'm just using s plus so plus is going to do the concatenation and hello world concatenate me that is what i'm expecting in the output so plus has been able to do that for me and as you can see here in the output it's hello world concatenate me similarly s is equals to s plus one also can be mentioned when i do that and when i try to print what's there inside s it tells me hello world concatenate me okay so these are some of the things that are there in python now some more iterations like letter is equals to z letter multiplied by 10 so when i'm doing that it means that i want z to come 10 times so that's what i'm able to do it here in the output so this is just to let you know that in python such things are possible okay so means you can work upon you can do such multiplication or such operations in python on the strings using your operators the plus operator the multiplication operator etc summing up 
the basic built-in string methods are used over here so objects in python usually have built-in methods so these methods are functions inside the object okay that can perform actions of command on the object itself we call methods with a period and then the method name so methods are in the form of object dot method parameters so these methods are usually the functions okay where these parameters are extra arguments we can pass into the method all right so don't worry if the details don't make 100 percent sense right now but later you will be creating everything and it's all very simple and easy as already mentioned it's a very interesting and easy programming language so s we know what is there inside s when i run the code uh, s is basically hello world concatenate me now i'm going to play around with this hello world concatenate me so suppose i just want to convert everything into uppercase so i'm just going to use s dot upper function in my case when i run this you can see that here in the output everything has been converted into the uppercase and similarly i can convert everything into the lower case also so s dot lower function has been used for that and when i run that here you can see in the output everything has now been converted into the lower case as we proceed we also have something called a split function so s dot split function is going to split all the objects so you can see that a comma is there which is coming up here and it is splitting all the words which are there okay in that particular sentence of s so this is how it works and you can also specify if you want to split from a particular element like s dot split w i've mentioned so from world where w started okay or wherever world was there or wherever sorry w was there from there it has done the splitting part and then rest of the things but remain the same so there are many more methods than the ones covered here you can visit the advanced string section to find more in the python documentation all right so that's there and the next um the next thing that we will be covering is about some more important uh, functions or some more important topics in python so stay connected and all the best and happy learning for python thank you